What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Crew Cast. I'm uh, your host, Jason Sukabel, my uh, partner in crime there, Cole Patterson, beside me, you guys can see. Uh, I want to start off and once again, thank you. Thank our sponsors. You see them at the top there, Prime Shrimp, primeshrimp.com. They're a new partner for us, but man, I tell you, people at Orange Bloods are loving it, man. So, I mean, give it a try if you haven't already. You see the promo code there for Orange Bloods. These guys are based out of Louisiana. Cole, they've been peeling and cleaning shrimp since 1940. It's farm raised. I know you've eaten it and I've eaten it. There's uh, different flavors. They're all great. It's restaurant quality. My favorite part, you drop it in some boiling water. Four minutes later, boom, you've got yourself a meal. There's no prep work. There's no hardly any cleanup other than the plate you're going to eat on. So it's a, a delicious and easy meal. So uh, thanks to our partners, Prime Shrimp. Go support them at primeshrimp.com. Uh, promo code orangebloods for another discount this week. Cole, as you can see, and everybody can see, this is not my usual background right behind me. I am checking in from sometimes lovely uh, Las Vegas. I'm at Bally's Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. My wife's out wandering around, hopefully not spending too much money. And I'm uh, recording a video here with you. And then I'm going to go enjoy a little bit of vacation time. But we wanted to, we said sure last you'd rather, week. You'd be rather talk about recruiting with me than you would uh, out in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, this is better than last night because we got in it was a horror story getting out here last night, which I won't bore everyone with the details, but we basically sat on an unair conditioned plane on the runway for three hours, yeah. fanning ourselves. Um, and then we got out here like four hours later than we were supposed to. And I still found a way to lose a bunch of money last night. So yeah, maybe talking to you might be the better, uh, the better play for me <laughs> away from that damn casino. Um, but uh, so we're going to record today. We said last week, Hey, we're going to do these more regularly. We're going to stick to our word. We're going to record one today. We're going to talk about some offensive linemen. Then we're going to try to record another one when I'm back in town later in the week. But today, I updated my recruiting board last week. Cole is on mm -hmm. Thursday. And what I want to do is later this week, go through the entire recruiting board. But today, specifically, I wanted to focus on offensive linemen. You went and saw uh, Connor Stroh this week. Mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of want to go through them. So what I'd like to do today is, is talk about these guys. I want to talk about where I think they are and my percentage of these guys landing at Texas. And then Cole, I want to get your take. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe you've got a different perception. Um, you know, Texas took seven linemen last year, right? Best offensive line class in the history of the school, best offensive line class in the country. So on the surface, you would think, oh man, it's going to be really tough for Kyle Flood to, to get a bunch of guys to come on board this year because they're not going to want to follow in those footsteps, but I don't gauge that. I don't get that when I'm talking to these, these players. So uh, let's go one by one. Uh, Connor Strobe, the big, big, big offensive lineman. You just yeah. saw him. I put him Cole on the recruiting board at 50%. I had Texas a few weeks ago. I had Texas, I think at 55, maybe 60. I can't remember exactly. I bumped it down to 50 because Texas A&M offered and they're in the mix. Um, we talked about him a little last week. He's got his five official visits. His parents both went to AM. Normally, you'd say, okay, he's probably going to AM with, with those ties. Yeah. I don't get that impression with Connor that he's locked into Texas AM. You just saw him. So, your opinion carries more weight than mine. What are your thoughts on Connor Stroh? And what would you put the percentage of him going to Texas? Yeah, I think it's in that, you know, 50% range. Um, maybe 45 if you, if you want to be in a safe end just because of the AM, you know, factor. But, yeah, I just saw him on Friday. There's a story up on him on orangebloods.com if you want to check that out. And basically just talks about, you know, his relationship with Kyle Flood, um, playing in the SEC, um, what he's looking for, all that kind of stuff. Um, Texas was actually the first offer for him last year. And ever since then, him and Flood have kind of hit it off. They have a great relationship. Um, like you said, in most scenarios, he pretty much be an a lock. Um not like already committed once he got that offer but i think it's different with connor i think he he's taken a pretty level-headed approach to his recruitment and kyle flood has really you know pushed the right buttons in in the recruitment so i think texas has a legitimate chance to win out i might give a m a very slight lead maybe a 51 49 kind of lead something like that you know but i think it's definitely an in-state battle he included you know arkansas auburn and florida in that but i think for all intents and purposes, is Texas or Texas A&M. I think it's, I think Texas is right there. I think it's neck and neck. And I, I do find it interesting that he's got all of his official visits scheduled for, I think it may start in May, but they end in June. Mm -hmm. And it's Texas A&M and then Texas get the last two. So Texas will get the last yeah. crack at him and his family. So 
um, yeah, this one's it's a really close call. And you know, you mentioned it, Cole on on Orange Bloods on our message board. Like Connor's a very likable kid, and he just is, man. Mm-hmm. And I, I noticed when you tweeted your uh, story about him immediately, he responded, "Hey, thanks, uh, yeah, Cole." Mm-hmm. And like, Connor's the only kid I can ever think of, dude. I was at the uh, rivals camp, and he came out. This was back in March or whatever it was, April. I can't remember. Yeah. It all blur together, right? But uh, yeah. <laughs> we were at a camp. He walked up to the guy who's basically running the camp, and mm. found him out and, and like, "Hey, thank you, thank you for having me at your camp." I've never seen another kid do that. Yeah, yeah you know, just a really good guy. dude. Yeah, he really is, man. He's an easy guy to like. He's an easy guy to talk to, and just mm-hmm. has a fun personality. So, um, you know, I'll be. I'll be rooting for Connor wherever he winds up. So mm-hmm. um, next one I want to move on to is Jaden Chapman, the offensive lineman out of Harker Heights. I had him pretty high early on. I had him, I think it was like 65% Texas. I still have Texas in the lead there at 55%. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Jaden told me last week he only has two official visits set up. Right now it's Texas and Texas A&M. I lowered my percentage because I just think he's a little bit more open than I originally thought. Texas was his Mm. first offer as well. Um, He's been to Austin a bunch. So, you know, I think of those types of things. He's from Harper Heights right up the road from Austin. I'm like, okay, that looks really good for Texas. But the more I've talked to Jaden, he seems pretty open. So I still have Texas in the lead at 55%, but Mm. not as commanding of a lead as I did previously. Uh, Your thoughts on Jaden Chapman out of Harper Heights? Yeah, he's another guy that Flood has pushed the right buttons with. You know, we – talked with him at the Under Armour camp, I believe it was. And, you know, he said really good things about Texas and Kyle Flood and all of that. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, th- I thought Texas had a pretty big lead, but uh, it seems like other teams are kind of in the mix there. He's a little bit more open. He wants to visit Alabama. He wants to see LSU, um, those kind of schools. So it's going to be interesting. I still think Texas will probably win out if I had to call it right now. But I think things are a little bit more interesting than they were um, back in, I guess, that was March. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I tell you, here's the guy that I've got the highest percentage on, um, and I'm not sure. I might be underselling this one, but Andre Kojo out of Arlington Timberview, every time I talk to him, and it's Texas, 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 his mom loves Texas. She would love to have him at Texas. He's told me that. He did visit TCU last weekend. He has a Texas visit, official visit set up for June. Those are the only two he has scheduled. So, you know, TCU is the local school or kind of the area school, so you got to be mindful of that. I've got Texas at 65% holding strong. Um, that's where I had them previously. I think I could. you could even talk me into going higher than that. I just th- This is a, a young man who just loves UT, loves Kyle Flood. Again, his mom's very – her opinion is very important. She mm-hmm. loves Texas. Uh, you know, I don't remember exactly when his birthday is. I would have to go through my old notes, but he's only going to be 17 when he graduates. So he's a really young guy that – you can really take some time to develop. Texas yeah. identified him early. Kyle Flood really seems to, seems to like him. Of all the linemen on the board, I like Texas's position with Andre Kojo better than probably anybody else. I've got him at 65%. Cool. your thoughts on Andre? Yeah, we saw him, um, I guess I was in March as well. Um, he was on campus. He came with uh, you know, a teammate and everything, and they kind of checked out Texas. And he really enjoyed it. He spoke pretty highly following the visit and all of that. And yeah, I, I think Texas is in a pretty good spot there. He, you know, TCU is kind of the closer, you know, more local team. So it's hard to, you know, completely discount them um, but or discard them. But um, I think Texas is in a good spot to eventually land him in the class. Yeah. We'll move on. Uh, the next guy on my list here is Ian Reid out of Vandergrift, which is it's a, it's a, technically in Austin. It's actually, believe it or not, it's in Leander ISD. My hmm. Daughter has ran track meet at a track at Vandergriff High School, so uh, I know I know Vandergriff pretty well. Uh, yeah. Ian Reed's an interesting dude, man. He plays rugby, like a very mm-hmm. serious rugby player, which probably translates it does translate really well to offensive line. I've talked to him about that. He goes, man, yeah. when you're on the rugby field, you're running nonstop. He goes, that makes offensive line pretty easy. You're running in mm-hmm. ten second spurts. Get you right? in shape. Yeah, exactly, dude. And then you know, he goes, hey, you got to have the right mindset to be a rugby player. And again, a lot of that carries over. So. I kind of I told him so I want to go out and watch you play some I don't know the first damn thing about rugby but I just don't want to go and I told him like the little I know about rugby is when I'm growing up like it, was, it used to be on ESPN all the time cold yeah. um, diapers back then but those dudes would score and the officials they go out there boom whatever they whatever they score points or whatever so um, but those dudes are usually like almost like soccer players or like smaller guys so I'm like imagine Ian Reed out there like 
whatever he is, six five, three hundred pounds. I'm you know running around out there. So um, what is Ian Reed? We got a six six two ninety. Yeah. So imagine that dude out there on the rugby field. He's got to be yeah. He's got to be pretty intimidating. But mm-hmm. I've got him at fifty percent. Right. Everything about that one makes sense. He's in Austin. Uh, you know, likes UT. Was at the spring game. He's got a, an official visit set up. Uh, he came in for the uh, elite junior day in January and got his offer. He's pretty open though. And there's a lot of buzz like from his school. This is coming from people on orange blood say, Hey, keep an eye on Clemson. He really likes Clemson. Clemson's offered. He's got a visit set up there. You know, you kind of get it. So there's a lot of things about this that would make you think Texas should be the leader, but I think Clemson mm-hmm. might even be the team to beat. I've got him at 50% and, that's kind of hedging my bets, obviously. But if I was, if you said no, you have to come off that fifty percent mark, I'd probably move him down to like forty-five. Mm-hmm. Like your thoughts on Ian Reed, Cole? Yeah, I mean Georgia is another program that kind of recently offered him as well. He's not a um, no. He's he's pretty open to leaving the state. He's kind of open to seeing what's out there. Uh, but interesting enough, uh, Connor Stroh actually pointed him out as a guy he would like to play with uh, in college. Um, so that could be something maybe potentially worth watching, see uh, whoever commits first, where they go. Um, but yeah, I mean, Texas has a lot to sell on him, staying inside or staying in Austin, staying in that Austin area, staying in state. Um, he's been on campus numerous times. I think he knows what he's getting from Texas and, and Kyle Flood and Steve Sarkeesian. I think he wants to see what Clemson has to offer, what Georgia has to offer. I think Alabama offered recently as well. See what they uh, can provide him, um, things like that. Uh yeah, I think Texas is right there, but Clemson seems to have a sly edge. Mm-hmm. Hey, I want to throw something out here. I just found out. I just got a message. Our sponsor, Prime Shrimp, primeshrimp.com. Guys, last week, I didn't even know this was still going on. We had a 50% promo, which is unbelievable, 50% off. And it's a money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, you get your money back. It's still going on for one more day. So we're sitting here on Monday Listen, man, go get your order of Prime Shrimp at primeshrimp.com. It's 50% off for one more day, promo code Orange Bloods. Okay, so let's get back into recruiting. Real uh, quick, I was just going to say, I just had some for lunch, actually, and I don't think you'll be looking for your money back. It's pretty good. I, I enjoy shrimp and definitely uh, exceeded my expectations. Yeah, dude, anytime someone says, hey, it's a money back guarantee, you know it's going to be quality product because yeah. they wouldn't put it out there if it wasn't, which I'm curious, what flavor did you have, Cole? Uh, I think I had the Alfredo one for lunch. I haven't so. tried the Alfredo. I want to come home and put that on some noodles when I get back to Austin. I'm looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, cool. They're all good. Yeah, I, I believe it. So uh, so moving on down the list here, Harris Sewell, one of my favorite offensive linemen in the class, is out of Odessa, Odessa Permian. Mm. I haven't seen Harris in action in a while. I don't get out to Odessa very often, right? We were, we were hoping he would come to the Rivals camp, but he didn't. But I saw him at a couple camps last year. Harris is a guy, you mean, you talk to him and – He's a nice kid, and like then he gets he's, you watch him in a camp or in his film, and he's, he's got a nasty streak on the field. Mm-hmm. I really like Harris Sewell as an interior lineman. I've got Texas at thirty five percent. He just seems pretty open and pretty he's pretty tough to, to read and really get a clear gauge on, on where he might be leaning. He doesn't say a mm-hmm. whole lot. Um, He's a guy that I think, you know, might there's some talk that he might be t- tied in a little bit to Arch Manning. If Texas gets Arch Manning, it's going to help with Harris Sewell. So I've got him at 35 percent just because I know there's a lot of other schools, and including schools like A&M and I think Oklahoma. And, you know, there's a bunch of others. I don't think he's really too focused in on a small group yet. But your thoughts on Harris Sewell, uh, Cole? We did, he did release his top five pretty recently and seems to be the five he's kind of focused on, but kind of. Similar to Ian Reed, it seems like Clemson's kind of made a big impression on him. Um, he seems to like what uh, Devil Sweeney and Clemson is offering him, um, getting out there. I believe he plans to visit out at Clemson. I think Alabama's up there as well. But, yeah, if I think the only way – you know, the only way, but the biggest way Texas will have a shot at getting him will be Arch Manning. If they can close on Arch Manning, I think they can have a domino effect. But without that, uh, it's kind of hard to see him going to Texas at the moment. Um Obviously, Kyle Flood has them in the game. We'll see what happens there. But it seems like he's pretty uh, pretty happy with the potential of leaving the state. He does seem pretty open about leaving the state. And he's just a, like when I talk to Harris, and he doesn't do a lot of interviews anymore. He did initially. But he just doesn't get too high or low. A lot of times when you're talking to these guys, you and I, it's, it's about reading their body language or their excitement mm-hmm. level. 
you know, maybe if they give a five sentence answer about one school and they talk for a minute about another school, yeah. um, you're like, okay, he's clearly more interested in this one that he talked a lot about. Harris just kind of keeps it pretty even keel. So he's pretty tough to read. Um, mm. The guy I've gotten that similar range, uh, TJ Shanahan, the uh, Austin Westlake offensive lineman. He was at the rivals camp uh, earlier this spring. You know, Texas seemed to have dipped there quite a bit to the point, like, I didn't know tech, how strong of a player Texas was at all. He did tell me, hey, man, as I trim my list, Texas will make that cut. Um, but he hasn't been on – this is a guy from Austin. Man. He's at Austin Westlake. He has not been at UT in a while. Um, mm-hmm. I think Texas is in the mix there. But I've got Texas playing from behind, you know, pretty strongly in that one. I've got Texas at 30%. And I know just in talking to sources, like the communication – isn't always crystal, I don't say crystal clear, but like it's not like mm-hmm. Texas can get TJ Shanahan on the phone or in contact with him anytime Texas wants to. He's kind of like yeah. maybe you send him a message and he responds a week later. That's not the best of signs. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've got Texas playing from behind. I've got Texas at 30% on TJ Shanahan, the, the uh, Austin Westlake offensive lineman. Uh, Cole, your thoughts on, on Shanahan? Yeah, he's a difficult guy to read um, just because, you know, he's not a typical Austin kid. He, moved in before his junior year to Westlake. So he's not really – he didn't grow up in Texas. He didn't grow up in Austin. So he doesn't have that, like, I guess, loyalty to the state. as Maybe some other guys that grew up in the state probably do. I think an argument could probably be made that Texas might be third in the race just in the state of Texas alone with, you know, his brother transferred to Texas Tech. Right. A&M seems to be in good shape there. Um, but he does have a lot of connections to Texas just as far as teammates go with – you know, Ethan Burke, uh, he's pretty close with Connor Robertson, those kind of guys. Um, yeah, he's just he's another guy that seems pretty open to leaving the state of Texas and kind of going wherever. I think uh, Ohio State's always been up there for him. Alabama is kind of a school has his attention. I can see Florida maybe being that mix. Miami just because he's from the state of Florida and you know, Chris Ball's down there with the Hurricanes. Um, he has a difficult guy to read. He's not really a you know Texas guy, so to speak, as far as being from the state. He, not really worried about uh, going far from home. Um, so I think he's a different, difficult guy, but very good player, plays with a lot of strength. And I think, you know, some of those Westlake connections might have Texas in it um, for a little bit longer than we think. Yeah, I think those connections keep Texas in it. But like you said, he's been at Texas Tech a couple times. I think he was there for their spring game. He's been there a couple times this spring. His brother transferred there at a I think – you could make a case for a and maybe being the team to beat. There was a lot of buzz on Ohio State very early on, but now that he's mm-hmm. kind of getting more and more settled in the state of Texas, I, I think that's a good point. I would probably agree with you that even in the state of Texas, I'd probably have Texas third uh, yeah. behind a and and Texas Tech. So got one more guy on our list, um, not a guy that we need to spend a ton of time talking about, Isaiah Robinson. Texas was recruiting him early. He came in for the junior day in January. Um, When I talked to Isaiah uh, most recently, it was at the Under Armour camp. Um, The contact with Texas had kind of dwindled, really had cooled off. So I think he's kind of down the priority list. I've got Texas at 25%. I think if Texas wanted to push there, they could probably get that number up quite a bit higher in in short order. But Mm -hmm. I think he's behind all these, a lot of these other guys we've talked about. So the odds of Isaiah Robinson winding up at Texas right now, cool. I've got him at, at 25%, and I don't see those odds going up unless Texas decides to push a little harder there, but uh, we haven't seen that happen just yet. Yeah, uh, I saw him at Under Armour as well. You know, we, I've seen him a couple times this offseason. He's still pretty good, but like you said, uh, even back in, I think it was February when I talked to him at a camp, he didn't really say a lot about Texas even back then. You know, he uh, visited, I think it was in January, he was on campus, and um, obviously knows his staff pretty well, but you know, I think TCU might be a school that he's really high on. You know, he's visited there a couple of times. Whenever mm-hmm. I've talked to him, he kind of goes more in detail. You know, you were mentioning earlier, if they give a five second answer compared to like a little longer of an answer, he's always talked pretty highly of TCU, pretty close to home. Uh, I think AM might be upping their efforts as well there. And he has some options, so I'm not sure um, how. Likely he ends up at Texas, but he's another really talented guy in the state that uh, is at least on the board. Yeah. I'll tell you, another school he really likes is uh, Southern Cal. He wants to study theater. So, obviously, there's a draw to, to USC. He's been out there, I think, once, and he's said he's going to go again. So, good school for that. 
Yeah, exactly. Keep an eye on USC for Isaiah Robinson. So, um, Cole, that's what we wanted to talk about today. Those are There are other offensive linemen that Texas has offered, and I've got them on our recruiting board as kind of in a separate category. Hey, they're offered and on the radar. But these are the guys that have been on campus that are truly on the recruiting board. That thing's always evolving, always, uh, always moving, always updating. I try to update it about once a month just because things can change pretty quickly. So the next big step will be official visits in uh, – mostly in June. There'll be a couple in May, and then we'll have a, a really good handle on some of these. But. It's coming up pretty quickly. It's going to be here before we know it. So yeah, it seems you know, like day was last week, and <laughs> yeah, we're already dude, gearing up for the summer. It never ends, man. Recruiting, like, <laughs> well, here I am in Vegas, right, recording a recruiting video because there literally is not a week anymore. Like, I try to schedule my vacations around work, but there's never a week when there's not something going on in recruiting. I almost have just conceded, all right, man, I'm going to have to miss something at some point, some kind of camp or seven on seven or something. So, but it's I'm like glad no saying it's a dead period anymore. It seems no, like there's even dead periods. Are not, yeah, dead periods aren't dead periods anymore. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, well, I'm glad we got to knock this out. We'll try to come back later in this week and go through other uh, positions in the recruiting board, including quarterback. Uh, Got a little guy named Arch Manning and running back and Jonte at receiver. So we'll address some of these other guys later in the week. But uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Once again, thank you so much to our partners at Prime Shrimp. PrimeShrimp.com. Go there now. You will not regret it. It's a money back guarantee if you're not happy, but you're going to be happy. And it's 50% off, guys. The, the, the food, the quality of food and the bang for your buck, you just can't beat it, man. Go load up right now. Stick in your freezer. You'll have great food for weeks and months to come. So primeshrimp.com, promo code ORANGEBLOODS, 50% off for one more day. Appreciate everybody watching. Y'all have a great week. I'm going to go enjoy a little bit of my time in Vegas and try to uh, change my luck a little bit. So uh, I will see y'all later in the week. Cole, thanks for your time, and we'll talk soon.